Hello, everyone. This is April, and uh, April is my client. We met a long time ago, haven't we, April? Yeah, we did. Yeah, I was thinking about that on my run this morning. It's been at least like uh, one and a half year, maybe? More, uh, yeah, I think more than that, because I think when I, the first reading I got from you, I was in a hotel room going to a thing for Doctors Without Borders, which is really different than what I'm doing now. Okay, so we're just here to kind of chat about energy and how things work. And also, I'm just curious to see how you, April, do things uh, since you come from medical field and you're doing Reiki at the same time. So can you just tell me more about um, what you do? What you, I mean, you're still going to um, do nursing, right? You're registered nurse? Yep. Um, so I, I have sort of a strange background in nursing. Um, I, when I got out, I, I did a stint in uh, South America for a little while mm -hmm. in an emergency room. And then I came back and worked with really sick babies, uh, terminal babies. And then I worked for hospice. Mm -hmm. So um, it gave me a very different view. Uh, most nurses don't pick those jobs. Um, oh, tell so, me more. Why is it that you chosen to do that job? Um, I think it's probably because I have eighth house sun and Venus. <laughs> um, it, you know, there's people that are very drawn to the beginning of life and I'm drawn to the end a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, and those people at that point, my healing consisted of uh, I had had healing done on me and she said, do you mind if I call in a, a, an archangel? And I thought, knock yourself out, whatever, it's fine. Um, <laughs> so she did. And she said, you carry a lot of stuff with you. I'm going to teach you how to do this so you can get rid of it. I'm going to teach mm -hmm. you how to call an archangel. And so I used to do that with people who are imminent, who were near death. Mm -hmm. And I could see it. I could see that change. Or if people who were in memory care, they're very aware of things like that. They're very aware of energy and what's going on with you they're not aware of the person who came in and gave them breakfast or took them to the bathroom but yeah. they know what's going on with you so that's where I first kind of experienced it but I didn't really give it much thought other than that mm -hmm. um, then I went for an attunement and that changed things that changed things where I could channel uh, mm -hmm. a language and the um, I think I'm very like you said I have a medical background my family, um, they're smart people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so very mentally focused. It took a number of attunements for me to really get in there. And yeah, and it's very interesting, isn't it? Tell me a little bit more how, um, do you remember one of the stories or maybe what stuck out to you the most when you were maybe trying to help those people somehow energetically where they couldn't understand what was happening around? Yeah, um, I had someone who usually right before someone passes, they'll start saying things like, that's my mom I'm over there, or, you know, yeah. I see so-and-so, and you you can check them out, and they can be the same. But you'll, you'll know that they're close because they're telling you about someone that mm -hmm. passed that's in their room. So we had someone who was really scared, and she... She couldn't talk because she was, uh, sometimes you get into hysterics, you know, especially if things can't get controlled, if you're under pain, you know, a lot of pain or mm -hmm. a lot of worry. So I just did that. I called in Archangel Michael and I, and I said, you know, I said it in my head. I was doing her blood pressure at the time. Mm -hmm. She was kind of swatting around at things. And so she just calmed down and then she actually started praying herself. And I, and I knew right when that change happened, mm -hmm. like right when that right when it shifted. And I thought, there you go. Yes, you're, you're feeling better, aren't you? You know, her breathing changed. Um, so I used to do that if people were imminent, and I got to visit them. Um, and they were uncomfortable. You know, mm -hmm. I would do the normal medical things, but I would also put that energy out there. Mm -hmm. The thing I think about with that is, especially when people are that close, they can't talk anymore. And so I'm asking their higher self is, you know, is that okay with you that I give you this energy? Cause I, I it's important, effort. right. To, to yeah. ask, uh, that was actually my, my next question. Like, how do you do it? Do you ask, is that okay with you? Um, how, how does that reply feel like? 
Like an it acceptance? Feels, yeah, it feels warm. It comes right back at you. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, um, uh, if I do a healing on somebody who's needed a healing for a long time, let's say, and they've been kind of just like, you know, limping along, their guides, it's almost like I get tears in my eyes when that energy comes to them because they're really thankful. And that, you know, like, thank you. We're really grateful for this energy. We needed this. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. So yeah. when did you take on your classes? So that, that's when you went to actually learn Reiki, right? Yeah. So the funny thing was Reiki is a, a thing where you come up close, right? And you put your hands there. I did that at the beginning of the pandemic. So everything I did was six feet away. <laughs> I um I did a lot of Reiki where I couldn't actually get near anyone um, yeah. at work, you know, anybody who would let me. I'd be like, hi, you ready? So, <laughs> <laughs> it changed how I understood Reiki because even my attunement was like this. It was over a Zoom meeting. And yeah. so nothing was in person. Um and most, there's most no borders to energy, right? Like doesn't matter. The right. time yeah, and you the space. Exactly. Yeah, I've, I've experimented with chi balls, putting in them, you know, in little chi balls, little names, little tags, you know, and people can bring those in when they want to, mm -hmm. if they want to do that. So it's very interesting. Um, it's sort of like when I studied anat anatomy and then I went to an acupuncturist and she was like, this is your kidney point. And I was like, that has nothing to do with where your kidney is. But <laughs> like, it's very, it's just a very different perspective you have to shift. But what I noticed a lot when I was doing those, when I was coming through that is that I was working this way. So I would face you yeah, and I'm not doing, I would just say, let this go to wherever it needs to go to, you know, when I first started. And what I noticed is I just worked with people's heart chakras a lot. Mm -hmm. And then as that got stronger, it, I would start with people, especially on the res when I was out on the Navajo res and some people were carrying some pretty heavy duty stuff and I would start there and they would go, Oh, and I would mm -hmm. think, okay, okay. We'll take some of that stuff out. Let's take some of that stuff out and then we'll keep going. Yeah. Cause yeah. Closed down. A lot of people are closed down. Where do you find yourself now? Like, is it after the course, like, I always had this question, okay, when it comes to teachings that have things to do with energy. Because um, I find a lot of people start doing this without really knowing what it is way prior. And it just happens naturally with obviously good intention and asking, you know, if that's okay for you. Um, but have you noticed that the course itself have somehow either strengthened your ability or made you maybe more focused energy-wise? I think what I noticed with different attunements is um, the shift in the way I thought of things because I came uh, from such a medical background. So mm. a lot of my family uh, happened to be biochemists and I almost was a biochemist. Wow. Um, so it was such a shift in how I view things. I mean, I, when I was really little, I think I was very much like this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I used to go around and do little things and be like, that's fixed now. All right. <laughs> yeah, but, right. right. <laughs> that's how it used to be. <laughs> like, he's good. All right. I'm going to keep on going. But it is when you go through school and you are, you know, you're forced to learn different laws. What I learn now is that, that there's that tunnel between science and magic or science and energy, right? It's the same tunnel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I, I find more and more places where they intersect. What came to me recently, I was listening to Dolores Cannon and she was talking about all the different waves and different things that came through. And, it, and I think about the different ways you can understand something mm -hmm. where here this person is having this problem and it's probably because of they didn't eat this or they didn't have that. Or you could look at it energetically, right? This mm -hmm. person got a blockage here. And they, you know, if you clear that blockage, then they'll realize that they need to eat this and that and whatever else. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I came through was when we're manifesting things, and there's a lot of us out there manifesting, is the, um, the Heisenberg 
uncertainty principle. I once saw a bumper sticker for this and I thought <laughs> it, and I would like to remember it, but I'm uncertain. So <laughs> he has this idea of this, where you can track an electron. Uh -huh. It's all electrons. And you could say this apartment building, usually this electron is in this apartment building and then he's usually in this room in this apartment, but we can't be sure. And so the more we look at where he is, the less we know about the momentum or the velocity that that electron has, right? Or his mm -hmm. orbital. So it's the, it's the physics that's fuzzy. Mm -hmm. And I thought it's exactly right. Because when we focus in on something, right? When we're manifesting something, we focus too much on it. Everything else gets fuzzy. Yeah. So that was, that's what I was thinking of recently. But I, I really think there's a lot of, you know, if we think about the, the different laws, they play into... Um, like people who do particle, you know, like particle physicists mm -hmm. who deal with non-matter. That's very close to what we're doing in spirituality. You know, a lot of the same interesting concepts and they're talking about different dimensions, you know? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I've watched Michio Kako. Is that how you say his name? Michio Kako. But he talked about the 11 different dimensions. And I thought, Yes, I totally get it now, but in a very different way. <laughs> yeah, but I think, you know, if um, if we took one of, one of them away, so say spirituality and science, we'd lose balance, right? It's, it's the same goes for, for everything. And when he talks about manifestation, um, I forgot the person's name who I watched. Anyways, if I don't remember, I'll let you know. But what I really liked uh, what he says instead of, you know, tr sitting down and trying to manifest and just kind of zoning out, um, focusing on that vision or whatever you're trying to get, um, it's important to also say, first of all, I want to send either peace or love or maybe something specific to mm -hmm. that maybe group of people who are poor. And then afterwards, once you really send out that from your heart, then afterwards ask for manifestation also goes a balance, right? Because right. a lot of times you see people talking about manifestation and um, no one really talks a lot about what they're trying to give back. I thought about that too, about greatness. Like what is greatness to you? Because mm -hmm. a lot of those people that, that brought us great and beautiful things, they they didn't have the abundant life or, you know, they, they had a different life. And so what is your, what is your definition of that? Yeah. And I, on the side of doing this and then nursing, I'm running and I'm running basically so I can get up to a marathon distance, which will take me a little while because I'm going to be 52 soon. And I'm, you know, I'm a plotter, but mm -hmm. I'm, planning on going back and running to bring awareness to all the missing and murdered women that are in the Navajo Nation or the women that are raped because no one's standing up, no one's making it out apparent. And I thought, you have a platform now, you can do that. Yeah. You can do these things that are for other people. So yeah. I'm really glad that you have a platform finally because uh, <laughs> it took you a minute, right? <laughs> it did. It did. I did know. it feel like the timing was not right for you or did it feel like you just didn't have enough time because your job is so intense? It was intense, yeah. Um, mm. It was an intense job. That I think I worked every weekend for a year. And wow. so, yeah, it was tiring. Plus I was... it. I, I very much, I think you and I both feel this way, but we like being out in the middle of nowhere and, you know, Ooh, this is exciting. I'm, you know, I'm totally hermiting right now, but it is, you know, living that is different because yeah, if anything happens to your car or, you know, <laughs> you don't feel well, you still have to go get water. You have to drive, at, you know, a certain amount of distance. So that was the other part is that I spend a year with no one knocking on my door and no one stopping by. Wow. So I had a lot of time. I had a lot of time to really process things and a lot of time to really kind of bloom internally. Mm -hmm. I think I created my own tower moment to an extent. And, that was and how important was that for you? Like, what did you realize after you came out of it? Uh, I think that 
One of the main things that I realized was that I had carried into adulthood many other dreams that weren't mine, you know, like that were other people's that I'm very close to my family. There's things that I want to be, you know, to be for them. And at some point you have to realize like, no, these are mine and I'm going to make these dreams. I and love I, that you touched on that. I'm sorry I'm going to interrupt because someone who is going to be watching this who is younger, it's mm-hmm. really, really important to know and to stop and think before maybe you choose what kind of career you want to go for, what you need to study and what is that actually yours. Because sooner or later, you're going to probably come back to what you wanted to do. You're going to get the experience, which is great. Like It's not a waste of time or money, right? But um, maybe... Uh, you could have kind of made it a little bit faster for yourself if you just stood firm with yourself and said, okay, if I'm going to screw up and what I want to do, I'm going to screw up. I can always come back, right? So thanks for touching on that. Yeah, I think that um, a a good friend of mine used to say I've been everything except a a manicurist and a senator. So (laughs) there's many different things that I tried out when I was younger, but helping people has always been there. I think the core of nursing is you feel called to healing. This is an extension of that. I think I'm getting farther and farther out. Some, some of the stuff that I'm putting on the channel is really aimed more at ascension or spirit animals. Um, I have a whole bunch of series going on right now. And I'm thinking of all kinds of other series, but I see you like, I I see your, um, videos pop up and I'm like, yes, you go, you go. And when I saw your, cause you started with healings only, right? As I remember. Right. Yeah. And I would play you um, to fall asleep because I don't see, I'm that person. I'm, uh, I'm quite picky when it comes to people. Okay. I have to really resonate with people that I want to talk to people that I want to especially work with energetically. And I booked um, early on the reading, not the reading, but the Reiki session with you. And actually my mom did (laughs) and she loved it. I think it's also your voice, the way you speak very calmly, always knew that I love your voice and the way you just, you're not trying to make yourself seem louder, you know, you, you just there. And for me, your energy, it always worked. Um, So especially putting me to sleep, I'm that person who it takes me an hour to to actually fall asleep. So you could actually talk about anything. I'd play you, (laughs) play a video, (laughs) you know, when I need to get to sleep because it's your, I think the vibration, again, it's a vibration. Voice is vibration, right? The sound. Mm -hmm. So it's also important to what you add uh, with your Reiki healing. So I'm going to link April's um, channel down below. And I'm very happy that you're doing tarot readings already. I know. Yeah, that was, <laughs> I thought of you. I thought of you when I was making that one. I know it's a little like wonky, but I'll get better at filming them. But it, yeah, it's, it's finally coming through really well. The thing that um, when I started doing the Reiki and the light language, I used to send it to people and literally put them to sleep. And I had my good friend, Justin, and I would say, text me back when you get this and let me know how it feels. And he would text me at like 3 a.m. and be like, I fell asleep again, April. <laughs> so it's not only me, you put people to sleep. No, I <laughs> sleep put people to sleep. <laughs> I think you'd be great at ASMR. I can literally see you doing that. Well, I think, yeah, part of it, I think it's very similar. I've watched other ASMR um, people and their hands are some, like some of the same stuff that I'm doing, some of the same ways that I move. And I, and I thought, aha, I got you. It's kind of coming to people universally. It's a exactly. similar energy that we are channeling in a way. Yeah, very much so. I'm, I think it evolves as I'm moving forward and I'm uh, looking more in a different symbology, symbols that it come up again and again. Because some of the stuff that comes through, I'll mm-hmm. say, oh, I know what this is now. But when I first started doing it, I didn't, you know, I just knew that that's what's coming through. There are certain symbols, especially this one, where it's someone's heart Mm -hmm. and I work heart. And then there's certain, um, it's always just another piece of that. Whoever, usually it's a collective, right? Yeah. I'm doing this on the channel. So it's that person and I'm healing different parts Mm -hmm. of that. So it will say that. And then it, you know, there's some little, there's some little signature move at the end that always comes through 
and I, you know, I'm doing it without thinking about it. That's mm -hmm. the most amazing thing to me that it just comes through and I do it and then it's done. But there's also um, one of the lovely, lovely things that comes through when I do personal ones a lot of times is this row of light right here. So mm -hmm. they want a row of light and they'll say, light it up, light it up, light it up, light it up. And that's what I'm doing. So I think, yeah. That's very I'm cool. I'm grateful to be part of anyone's life in that way. And are you um, including somehow the uh, um, tarot cards prior to doing the healing or just purely doing the healing itself? No, I usually do. Um, when I do healings for people personally, I start out with checking in with their energy. And so I start out with tarot usually because I can click mm -hmm. in real quick and find out what's going on um, and kind of see where they're at and where they're going. I usually do a couple, maybe three or six cards. And then I, you know, set my intention. I call in their guides and my guides. And that's another really interesting thing because a lot of times their guides speak through me. And sometimes I'll giggle a little bit because I'll be like, what do you want me to say? Oh my gosh. But <laughs> you just go for it? <laughs> I do. I'm like, mm, all right, I'll take a challenge. But a lot of times it's ancestors of theirs and it's almost like a dialect. It's like a different dialect who lives on the Navajo Res, I really thought like, I think the mountain is your like ancestor. The mountain itself, it's like primordial, you know, like this roar sound that came through. It was really cool. So I think that, yeah, that's probably the most amazing thing that I've experienced. When you connect to someone's ancestor, like they are so, so different. Like one of them can be very tough and like mm -hmm. barely speaks, just very serious. Um, the other one cracks jokes and it's, it's characters, you know, right. it's very interesting characters. <laughs> you get a really like, strange room of, you know, relatives or something like, okay. Yeah. So uh, do you want to do this full time, April? I haven't asked you that, I think. I, I do. I do. I'm putting that energy out and I feel like um, hopefully that will happen this year. And I... I, I very much, there's certain parts of nursing that I'll always love, but I think I'm going to get something very similar and even much more meaningful with doing this work. Um, I, I, the one part of nursing that I didn't like uh, is, is being, you know, not face-to-face -face or direct care. I very much love that. In fact, mm -hmm. I used to volunteer at hospice when I didn't work there anymore so I could feed people and give them a bath or something because I'd be like, hey, how's it going? Let's get in there. Yes. But um, there is the this new series, and I resonate very much with being masculine most of my life, very masculine lady. But um, I've met a few people who have kind of been like, here's some feminine energy. And now I, I'm able, I felt it coming through because for a while it was just, you know, I was working with archangels and I like that because they get it done. Like, yes. You know, they don't mess around there. It's very quick. Let's heal it. Let's go. Let's get it done. But goddess energy comes through. And that's some of the really beautiful things that I've been able to channel now is mm -hmm. we're starting this. I'm starting this goddess series. And um, when Hecate came through, it was so strong that I had to take a nap afterwards. So, but she's with me now on these runs and I'll use it when I'm at a crossroads. I know that seems silly. But I totally, I can feel it. I'm like that road. Okay, I will see someone on that road. Or that road, I won't. All right, I'm gonna go that one. But mm -hmm. it, it's sort of amazing. And some of the stuff that she'll bring about, especially um, you had something in this with your weekly energy recently about birds. Oh yeah, they were all over one pile. Birds, birds, but like in, there was crazy. I think yes. three or four cards and out of my window. Yes, that's me. <laughs> That was your pile. <laughs> There's birds everywhere. I was looking for birds on the side of the road and one swooped, almost, like almost hit my car. I was like, holy crap. Okay. Wow. But yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot of just, I think things that on a day-to-day -day basis, we don't think about as far as nature, about being tuned with nature. Like that's become much closer. And yeah. I think it's a lot of that feminine energy. So I'm going to continue. Mother that. Earth. I, I have two. I have a lady that um, lives out west still, but very, very feminine. 
And I'm just like, wow, you're my friend. Because mostly I'm blessed with lots and lots of Taurus women and Leo women in my life that are like, April, this is reality. And I'm like, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like trying to keep me straight. No, 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 you're wandering on. But I I think now it's the the feminine energy to me is really like, it's okay. Because this whole venture with me doing this and putting it out there, very different than who I was prior because I didn't have any social media. I never wanted to be a part of anything. Everything was closed. And it's about being vulnerable and allowing others to see that vulnerable part of you. Even though, you know, some people would be like snickering in the corner. It, you know, that, that's been a huge thing for me, I think. Because you also put yourself out there to be judged, like for, you know, in front of any, everyone else. And I find a lot of people have a lot of problems with that and they procrastinate starting their own channels or Instagrams or TikToks, whatever the case. And I'm like, listen, you really have to put out content. Like if you want to make this your job, you really, really have to be consistent with what you're doing. For example, like I, for me, because that's what I do full time now. You know how it is when you're self-employed. You have to be really mindful, especially of on YouTube, what you're going to do once you're away, because how YouTube algorithm works, at least for my channel right now, because I know it can be different, Mm -hmm. is that if I took like a two week break from YouTube, I mean, break meaning that I put out like two videos in two weeks, right? you'd see that it's very hard to come back and have the visibility again. It would take me another three weeks to build it up to where it used to be. But three weeks of actually putting a lot of content out. So that consistency, particular with YouTube, has to be there. But I think it's also very good for building character and saying, that's what we do. Yeah, that's my job. Yeah, that is my job. Yeah. And I remember I said it to someone, um, they switched from working for someone else for themselves you know in spiritual world and they were like damn like it's so hard sometimes just you know sit down and do work and i'm like (laughs) remember those days when you'd be hangover waking up after three hours and still making it to work like so now you're just being lazy like you're not even tired just being lazy (laughs) (laughs) kick your ass you know that's right (laughs) I know that that is very true because I, you know, I think if someone else is keeping you honest about it, you know, so you have that boss, you have that other, that third person that you know that you have to satisfy these requirements mm-hmm. and it, yeah, it changes when it's your role. My mom's always um, for a long time now, she's been in business for herself and I've, she's like a little tiny woman with, she's like a little, uh, like a little can of whoop ass you know she just wakes up and she's like wow i'm so the opposite (laughs) it's hard sometimes because i feel like i'm not doing anything because i'm very just like glass you know like i have my coffee i go for a run with my dogs but there's yeah there it's it's good to see that because she's going to be 80 soon and she's still running her business you know she's still nice very yeah. well done but she seems like a character who's always ready to go from what you said like get up and go yes yeah and i think i've forgotten that a little bit and she's eased up a little because you know she's gotten older she's like i get to sleep and i don't have to go into work i can work here but it you know it's different with your um that relationship changes you know mm-hmm. throughout your life with your mom and so now I'm seeing a very different side of her, which is, it, it's interesting because I, you know, when you visit once, you know, once every so often, you don't see that. But if you're there, you know, you definitely you see those changes. Yeah. That, that, yeah. It makes me think a lot about crone energy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it also, I think, ties into what we talked about this Mother Gaia, right? The earth. It seems like that's what what you're in right now. Like it's all about this motherhood and femininity and just a lot of care. Um, Yeah. A lot of connections. So sometimes when people think, oh my God, like I need to um, 
I need to go back home, for example, but really don't want to, but life is pushing me to. I always mm-hmm. say there is something there that needs to be ticked, you know, something to be done. Right. Yeah. Doesn't mean That's, it's forever. Well, because those are sort of your soulmates as well, right? Your parents. Yeah. So you're working out that karma. Strong and- contract. <laughs> Strong contract, right? <laughs> you have to show up. We yeah. will bring you back. So I, I, I definitely feel that. I definitely feel that. Um, my father has passed, and so all of my relationship with him is, oh, I'm kind of flickering, aren't I? But, <laughs> sorry, let me try to. All right, there we go. When did it start, though? I have not noticed. Uh, when you yeah. said, when you talked about your father, maybe he's with us. yeah. Yeah, well, there's all kinds of strange stuff that happens in this house. This house ah. was built in the early 1900s. <laughs> I wake up and movies are playing and I'm like, why? <laughs> oh, random like that? Yeah, yeah, very, um, there is definitely other spirits here. Yeah, we can really tell from, from your screen only. And the mic problems in the beginning too. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we don't and even know how spirit. to fix them. That's another thing about healing, especially if you had things that happened when you were younger that you, uh, let's say, you go to a therapist and you solve those, and then other events happen in your life, and then you solve those again mm-hmm. because it's just you know me now in this area, me now with a significant other. So you constantly resolve yeah. some of the problems very very true it's a never-ending journey to be honest right never ending (laughs) that's why you know when people sometimes um obsessed with uh different healings in short space and time it's one step at a time you can book a reiki you can book a tarot reading you can i don't know do hypnosis whatever go to spiritual retreat but it has to be at a time when you feel like it's necessary not that i'll do all these things and i'm done it's different stuff exactly how you start coming up at different times. Right. Yeah. Because if you saw that now, you, you know, like if we look down the road 20 years from now, you'd be like, oh, well, that doesn't, you know, why would that happen then? But mm-hmm. you won't know when you get there. Yeah, very true. So thank you, April, for sharing all these stories. I love the scientific parts and how you explained everything. So thanks for that (laughs) and for all your work that you're doing on YouTube. So whoever resonates with April, she her links will be down below. And it was a really nice chill chat. Love it. And hopefully we're going to catch up soon. Brigitte, thank you. Most amazing woman. She just, you just, <laughs> you're know, just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You just, I don't think people realize. Thank you so much, April. You're a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, <laughs> everyone. <laughs>